Okay, I guess now we can we can start the session. So it mainly focuses on understanding the provided reference documents and terms of reference. So we will define what what terms of reference is, and then what are the key components, um, and a lot of like uh, a lot a lot of terms so that we can understand why the provided reference documents. So first we need to have a clear understanding of what terms of reference or TOR refers to and then like so in short in short like a TOR or terms of reference it's a, a document so like that document it's basically used in project management so like particularly it's used when hiring contractors or uh, consultants so like it serves as a formal agreement between the hiring organization and the contractor so it will also outline the expectations the roles and responsibilities so um, this is just in short, what the terms of reference document is, and it also serves as a guideline for all the project ac activities and deliverables. Uh, the key components for TOR or terms of reference are project background and context. Uh, we will have just a short highlight, uh, short highlights. So, project background we can understand from the name. It's just uh, an overview of the project's purpose or what the project is about. It also it it can also it mean it may also explain why the project exists and how it fits in the uh, uh, with the goal of the organization. So, the second one, the the second main component is. Uh, objective and goals so when we say by objective and goals it's uh, it it is like uh, it's it guides the contractor towards the desired outcome so like uh, so that the contractor will have uh, a clear mindset on the tasks that he like the, con uh, the individual is expected to do so uh, these are the objectives uh, the objectives in coming to the goals it's uh, actually like uh, it will help to define the broader impacts of the projects that's expected to make so like it's just the targets the objects the goals are the, tar the targets that project is aimed to so the third one is a scope of work in deliverables so again a scope of work it's it's like the scope of the project what it touches and what it includes and then coming to deliverables it is uh, it includes the expected activities, tasks, and respons responsibilities that the contractor will undertake. And then the fourth one is time frame and milestones. So, uh, time frame, uh, time in the time frames, we will have uh, the duration of the projects and the key milestones. Uh, so, like these are important for measuring progress so that we can ensure that the project is completed in the given timeline uh, and then the last one is evaluation criteria the evaluation criteria it's it explains the performance of the contractor or the consultants so like uh, actually evaluation criteria it explains how we can measure the performance of the contractor or consultant so like these are the five key components that the terms of reference should include and then uh, terms of reference it's uh, the basic importance of terms of reference in the tender application the first one is it will ensure the alignment with the project goal and also it will provide us a clear roadmap so that uh, we can have a clear mindset on how to execute the project so then next one is a, de a detailed breakdown on the terms of reference so like the first one is context so on the context se section we have a background in the rationale of the project and then the second one is tasks so that in the tasks we have specific activities that the contractor needs to perform so these are uh, like the, exp the responsibilities or the actions that are expected from the contractor so the third one is concepts so in the concepts the pro we, we have the proposed methods and strategies so um, for example like if the contractor suggested some strategies or uh, some 
some ideas it's we can consider it in this section and then the first one is personal and then it includes qualifications that are required it might be technical experience or just an experience and or skills and like a lot of qualifications so it will uh, it will be <coughs> included in this section the next one is costing uh, which includes budgets and expense budget and expenses so no we need to include the budgets the budgets that we are going to invest in the project in this section and then the last one is format so in the format we we should include on how to structure and submit the tender um yeah i think like uh, these are more of a clear terms so uh, let's continue with the next one. Uh, this is another document, a service of contract draft. So um, in the service of contract draft, we have uh, basically like uh, it's a document which uh, which clear uh, which which defines the, the relationship between the service provider and client. So it will also clearly outline the their roles, responsibilities, and obligations. Uh, so like the main key clauses of these uh, documents are scope of work, payment terms, confidentiality clauses, and termination conditions. When we say by scope, uh, when we say by scope of term, scope of work, uh, it means uh, it will like uh, it will specify the details, the exact services that the provider will offer, and also. <coughs> this should also include the tasks activities and the responsibilities that are expected from the provider so the like the next uh, key clause is payment terms so in the payment terms we have uh, we need to sp specify how and when the payment will be made and it includes detail like the total cost of the project the payment schedule it might be upfront or uh, it it might be delayed uh, if we have also late fees or penalties or for delayed payments we will mention it under this section which is payment terms and then the <coughs> the third one which is confidentiality clauses uh, uh, like it's uh, it is basically on it explains on how to protect the, sensi the sensitive information that one party may disclose to the other during the course of the contract so like we it ensure it uh, like this part basically it helps us to ensure that both the service provider and that the client agree to keep confidentiality informations private and also not to share it with the uh, with third parties so like the fourth one is termination condition uh, termination condition it's uh, it explains the conscience or uh, the like it 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 it, it, it explains uh con what conditions the contract can be terminated so uh it includes situ situations like maybe uh it might be due to the non perform the non performance by the service provider or the failure to make payment so like we have a lot of different situations so we will outline them under this section and then uh service of contract draft it helps us to uh, again ensure legal and contractual compliance between both parties and also it protects both parties interests since we have confidentiality clauses or termination condition all are decided by both the part both parties so like it helps us to protect both parties inter interests uh, so far do we have any question if you have if you guys have a question uh, raise it so i think let me continue <clears throat> the next one is self declaration of eligibility uh, this is also another document so this document it helps us to confirm the eligibility of the bidding party to participate in the tender so like this also it also certifies that the con that contractor meets if the contractor meets the eligibility criteria uh, that's it that's it by the tender so like if uh, like uh, if the contractor may already meet uh, all the criteria that's meet that's it by the tender uh, we can certify it we can certify the contractor so 
yeah so like the context the in the contents we have a statement of compliance with eligibility criteria and then declaration regarding conflicts of interest legal and regulatory adherence so yeah like statement of compliance with eligibility criteria it may uh, this part like this section specifically it includes a specific statement is where the bidding party certifies that they fulfill that in their eligibility require, uh, requirements so like uh, like basically we will have uh, requirements that the uh, like the the like the participant should have so we will certify it based on this those il the provided eligibilities so the second one is declaration regarding conflicts of interest uh, basically the conflict of interest declaration it will it it helps us to ensure that the bidding party it doesn't have any personal professional or financial inter interest that could impl improperly influence uh, their participation in the tender and then the third one legal and regulatory inherence it will help us to comply with all the legal and regulatory requirements that are relevant to the tender and this document also helps us to ensure that all participants they meet the necessary qualification or requirements that are set by the tender and also have a, a legal requirements so that we can be like uh, first we need to certify the parties before allowing them to uh, to undertake in the tender so it will help us to have a quality or a potential uh, participants for the tender the next one is price schedule so the in the in the price schedule it's uh, this this document is also a, cr a crucial part of uh, tender submissions uh, it will help it will provide a detailed cost breakdown of like uh, for the project so the importance is critical component of the this is a critical component of the tender submission and also it will outline the financial proposal and cost breakdown for over for over all the project the project so the key elements include detailed cost estimates for each project phase so for example for the designing we have this cost and then for the developing phase we have this cost we will just outline we will have a detailed cost estimation for each project phase and then we will we will also have the next key element is breakdown of person personnel equipment materials and overhead so we will uh, if we have a breakdown of each each and every resources that are needed for the project it will uh, make the like uh, it will help us to understand uh, how much cost we have or uh, like the price detail of the project execution so we will uh, the, the, these two are the key elements for this uh, price schedule reference document and then uh, when we come to the tips we will we first need to ensure uh, accuracy and competitiveness and also uh, referring to past data or uh, like a historical data and also market rates for estimation it will help us a lot like mm, and we when we see like past past uh, past past experience of others, it will help us to provide more accurate data. Uh, or also, we need to have a little bit market research so that we could like we could we can come up with a more tangible and realistic break uh, price schedule. And the next one is invitation letter. So the purpose of this invitation letter is. Uh, for all the tender participants so we will have a formal invitation so that uh, they can uh, we will just have a formal invitation so that they can take in the tender process the key elements is we will highlight them the overall the tender process and then we will have submission guidelines and deadlines so yeah again like uh, it's just uh, we will show them on how the tender will goes like and then the third one is contact information for queries so if they have anything uh, 
we will just provide them with the contact the, with the contact information so the importance of this invitation letter is it will help us to initiate the tender process it and also it will help us pro, uh, provide essential details for the participants so <clears throat> we have contact information uh, over all the pro, uh, over all the process of the the tender and also the submission guideline in deadlines in the invitation letter mm. so before coming to this do we have any question do we have any question guys okay mm -hmm. so coming to the general terms and conditions uh, this is actually uh, standard terms for contracts that are issued by uh, GIS or GIZ company. Uh, so, like these are the standard terms for contracts for contracts. So, it will help uh, having those uh, having this standard terms. It will help us to ensure clarity and fair fairness in the execution of the contracts. So, the key sections. It uh, the first one is general provisions in the general provision we have appli uh, applicable law and contract components so like applica applicable law yeah i think like applicable in the general provision we have applicable law and contract components so applicable law this would be the law of the country where the giz uh, operates or where the contract is executed and then uh, with the contract components it will include all the document terms the terms conditions uh, that are part of the contract so the second one is provision of works and services which includes quality standards confidentiality property of rights uh, and yeah these three points and then the next one is pricing remuner remuneration and invoicing so it also contains payment terms uh, in the pay payment terms it will it depends on how and when the payment will be made and a lot of details on the payment and then invoicing procedures uh, which outlines the procedure for submitting invoices uh, and then the next point is pricing structure. So it will specify the pricing model. Uh, if it's fixed price or time, um, like if it's fixed price or other uh, points, so we will have them in the pricing structures. So the next one is supplementary performance, inter su supplementary performance interruption and termination so in the uh, in these terms also we will have conditions for per performance so rights to interruption uh, like when we say rights to interruption it will define the, the, circum the circumstances in which uh, either of the party has the right to interrupt the contract or work uh, <clears throat> Uh, for example, it it might be unforeseen circumstances or emergencies from both sides of the uh, from both side from both side of the party, and then termination. Uh, again, termination also has uh, like a bit of similar concept, but it again describes under which contract uh, under which circumstance that the contract can be terminated. So, like the next one is liability and contractual penalties. It also con uh, includes liability clauses and penalties for non-compliance. And the last one is final final provisions, which uh, also again includes mysterious legal stipulations and final agreement terms. So, these are this is just standard terms that's uh, that's issued by GIZ company for uh, to have like. Uh, standard contracts so these are the main key sections and in, it will help us uh, to ensure compliance in successful project execution and also again it avoid legal and operational issues so like i think you need to have a little more time to see those concepts so that you can be familiar with it more 
uh, and the next one is application requirement of GIZ. So the specific requirements for application submitted to GIC, the key requirements are the first one is documentation standards, and then the second one is submission guidelines, and then the third one is compli compliance criteria. So <clears throat> if we have those requirements, I think like we can provide a more standard contract for the GIZ company. And then this the importance would be it will help us to ensure complete and compliant application during our tender process. So before moving to here, do we have any other question or unclear concepts so far? Do we have any question or maybe are you guys lost? Any reaction? You can't hear me, right? Okay. Okay. This is just like an overview of over all the documents that you are provided in the data section for your challenge documents. So uh, the next one is on how to do the assessment for the technical evaluation. This is just for the technical aspects of the, the tender. So this is like, a, these are a short uh, like a framework for evaluating the technical as, uh, aspects of the tender. So the key criteria for, for the evaluation is technical expertise and approach, project management capabilities and relevant experience and past performance. So like uh, having the experience or any technical skill uh, the skill management uh, experience, all of this will add a value for the, the during the evaluation, and also on the coming to the tips on how to provide the technical evaluations. First, like we will highlight the the strengths and we will also align with the evaluation criteria, and also we will provide a clear and detailed responses. So, having this, I think we can provide. Uh, a good technical uh, aspects and also the next one is information on implementing data protection provisions of the GDR. GDR means uh, general data uh, general data protection regulation yes general data general data protection regulation and then uh, in this also like this uh, the main importance the main importance of this document is it will uh, it's mandatory compliance for handling personal data within the eu eu is european union but like uh, it's specifically restricted like in the eu to have this as a mandatory to so that we can have uh, we can ensure uh, trust is between the parts and also handle personal data privacy also so like it also protects data privacy and enhances trusts so it's more of on the security issue uh, coming to the practical tips or for implementing a GDR provision. The first one is ensure all documents comply with the GDR provision so we will uh, in order to ensure all documents comply with the GDR provision, we can have the first one is privacy notice. So if there is any update in the privacy rule or uh, like any notice, we can provide them clearly and we need to uh, inform individuals about their data and how it's used, stored and protected. And then the next one is implement robust security protocols for example if we consider an organization which stores customer data in a cloud-based uh, management system uh, like it should include uh, either like encryption to the data or uh, implement multi-factor authorization so that we basically we can provide a more we can like we can provide more security pro we can we can implement more security uh, ideas on the on the like on the provided circumstance. So for the organization to include both the multi-factor auth authentication and cloud-based uh, like implement encryption is a uh, best idea. And then the next one is ensure team members are aware of GDR requirements. So like 
ensuring that uh, each team member is aware of PDR provision, it will help us to uh, to follow up on how like uh, how how the uh, it will help us to ensure that the individuals know how the how their data is being used and uh, how like. Uh, their data is being protected in a lot of different issues. So, like maybe to, to ensure each team members are aware of GDR requirements, we can consider of training or policies and pro procedures. Uh, yeah. So, like the next one is practic practical steps for using POR in gender applications. So, first, uh, before like uh, first, we need to read and understand the TOR, so we can, uh, in order, we can identify the key requirements and deliverables, uh, and then we need to align our proposal. So, like uh, before preparing your proposal, you will just read and understand, and then you will identify which requirements, which key requirements that you need to focus on, and then the deliverables that you need to provide and then the next one is aligning your proposal so like you uh, while uh, while preparing your proposal you need to ensure your proposal meets the tor specifications so you uh, and again you can use ai for drafting or you can use any chat gpt or ai tools so that you can create draft documents based on the tor requirements that you are asked to and then the next one will be refine and validate. So, like you need to edit drafts so to ensure alignment with the TOR, and then uh, like you you need to also you need you need also to make sure that you are complementing you are like you are going again with the like in the same way with the provided gender guideline. So, the next one is leveraging AI for document analysis. So like how you can i think you are familiar with uh, with these concepts so far so ai tools for document analysis uh, you can use the first one is text mining extracting relevant information text mining so like uh, you can extract re relevant information and then uh, like the next one is nlp uh, you need to understand and interpret the document and then the next one is model learning which in which we you will identify patterns and compliance checks so the benefits will be uh, increased efficiency and accuracy and also you will have automated compliance verification and improved document clarity so like I think using AI tools, it will uh, like you have the basic concept, so it will help us to uh, have a minimum time. So in order to do a lot of tasks, so just utilize the AI tools that you are familiar with. So like these are summary of the nine given documents in the data. Yeah, so. These are price schedule, invitation later, serve declaration of legibility, service contract draft, terms of reference, uh, application requirements, uh, assessment grid for technical evaluation, general terms and con conditions. So like, since now we have the basic understanding of the concepts, I think if you have any question in the uh, present, in the session so far, you can ask now and then, if you don't have, you can like, since you have already got the, under, the basic understandings of each document, you can proceed with the next challenge. So how is it? Do we have any questions so far? Any question? Okay, Tara, you can continue. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe can you share with us those uh, technical documents you have shown in the previous slide? Also, the whole week challenge, I think it's not shared, not yet. So maybe can you remind them to share us those uh, weekly challenge documents, including these uh, slides? Thank you. 
okay Tarafa I, I will make sure to share this slide after this session but I think like the document is already shared in all week seven uh, Kerod has already shared it but like the data we uh, I will make sure that it will be shared soon okay uh, Edwin you can continue Edwin? Okay. And Neo, you can continue. Yazi and Neo, you can continue. Uh, maybe if you are talking, we are not hearing you. You are muted. Okay, Edwin, you can continue. Oh, sorry, I had it unmuted. Can you now get me? Uh, we can't hear you. You can't continue. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. Please listen me. Please listen to me for my chance. Okay, you can go first. I have one question. Sure, you can continue. Okay, thank you. Uh, please share all documents uh, for all members. Sure, sure. We we will we will make sure to share all the documents. Okay, okay. Thank you. Hello? Okay, Edwin, you can continue now. Yes, my question is uh, now using uh, the natural learning processor. Eh? I don't know if that is uh, the, the full the full term. Uh, can it help us to come up with other documents that uh, will be needed uh, from the term terms of reference? And what kind of prompts can we use while doing that? Okay, so like uh, actually, like natural language processing, this is just the definition. So. Uh, the natural language processing as well uh, like it's with do you want me to define it or no uh, I, I get it but to what extent can it uh, help us come up with uh, other documents that are used in the term of references or that are required in the terms of references okay okay so like actually like nlp it's included on how to leverage ai for document analysis so basically uh Honestly, like uh, just including those all the terms that are mentioned over here, it is about on how to, on how much you are able to customize your prompt or not. So, like if you if you can customize your prompt, uh, maybe like you will have a, a very very much a good output from the AI tools that you are using. Uh, so, like it the concept basically the all email and NLP it overall comes to the prompts that we are using so like uh, just try to customize and use a uh, best prompt okay okay thank you okay sure okay Kasa you can continue uh, okay thank you it's nice uh, presentation uh, I think based on today's uh, lesson sessions that we have got, we are expecting to submit our assessment, especially on the bid uh, preparation. So maybe as we have our experience, uh, some bid, bidders provide their experiences, uh, documentation, especially licenses like that one is in the real experiences. But in this assignment, uh, I think we don't expect to submit this materials and experiences, I think. Is that or not? Uh, I I think like you are not expected, but I will make sure and we'll come back to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, sure. Okay, do we have another questions? Yeah, it is a good, a good question. Uh, okay. Casa, just to add on Casa's okay. questions, like it okay. may require the education background and the qualification and so on. So in this case, are we supposed to just include these things? Thank you. 
I think like you are supposed to include those things. So like since we have over all the Tinder application, uh, but I will make sure with the team and then we'll get back to you. Maybe I will just answer it on the Slack. Okay, thank you. Okay, so do we have another question? Maybe on the, if, if you didn't understand the purpose of the document or if you didn't get what the document is all about, any document, like we have over all nine documents. So the TOR and then this one, this one, this one, this one, and a lot of them. So like, uh, do we have any questions so far? Uh, we don't have any question. Are we all good? Okay, Rudolf, can go on. Okay, I just want to ask them if they have access to the data folder. I mean, the, the folder that contains all the documents. Okay, all right, good. Okay, so like, do we have another question? So like maybe some reactions, so we will just wrap up the session and I will make sure to share all the files and again, answer the questions. Okay, so I think uh, have a good day, all of you.